My next guest is no stranger to Picture Lock. DC native Anthony Anderson is a writer, director, actor, and producer of the hit series Anacostia. The show is available on YouTube and Montgomery County TV. Anthony, welcome back to the show. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> it's my pleasure. Yes, I'm giving you Benning Road, what they would call Benning Road trade today. You know, wow. with the beard and everything. <laughs> Can I tell you, it's a mess. every time that we sit down uh, together, whether it's on a red carpet or it's here, it is a, a blast. So I'm looking forward to this interview. Yeah, and the common denominator is I had been drinking. <laughs> so, yeah, this is like to, like today. Okay, so <laughs> this is going to be great. You have been drinking because you because explain I, why. Okay, I was at a tuxedo fitting, and at the store they provided champagne while I was trying on... <laughs> tuxedos right so i had about five glasses so this should be real interesting this should be now the reason that you were trying on a tuxedo is for the indie series awards correct right so In can LA. you explain uh you know and congratulations by the way thank for you. anacostia thank receiving you. this award or the nomination thank you we, we uh, received five nominations i think this is our 30 31 in total since the show started. Wow. Um, and the Indie Series Awards is is our version pretty much of the Emmys or the Oscars. It's for um, online content for web create, for web creators in the drama and ca and comedy categories. And it's put on by Roger Newcomb and uh, Kevin Mulcahy of We Love Soaps TV. Um, so this is the second year it's been in LA. So a uh, little bit of pressure to look good on a uh, LA red carpet. <laughs> so I finally got the tuxedo. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, congratulations. I look forward to and hearing some that. Free champagne. <laughs> <laughs> and Acacia took home some uh, statues. Yeah, we have a total of, well, we've won a total of six so far. Six. Okay. Six. Yeah. That's so hopefully, so hopefully we will win another. Okay, so for the audience um, and that hasn't seen Anacostia, can you just explain what Anacostia is uh, all about? Sure, well, Anacostia is a 10-episode <coughs> uh, dramatic web soap. It's much aligned with the soap operas of One Like to Live, General Hospital. Uh, it takes place, of course, in Anacostia, which is a suburb in Washington, D.C. Um, it has everything that you would want, suspense, intrigue, drama, mystery, sexy men, sexy women, great story. Uh, we have a super guest star by the name of Martha Byrne from mm -hmm. As World Turn, two-time Emmy Award winner. Mm -hmm. um, and we're currently in our fourth season right now, which is amazing. That is amazing. And... One of the things that I love is that as a creative, this came from your, your mind, your brain, mm -hmm. and now, you know, just seeing where it's gone. How do you feel about about that? And what inspired you to to, to create it? Um, well, the inspiration, well, I feel great. I, I feel great about it because being that it's our fourth season, uh, there were a lot of shows that we started out with that stopped after one stopped after one season for, for various reasons and for us to still be going and to still be getting um, um, recognition and to still be building a fan base is really amazing because you can't get network television shows to do that most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, and the inspiration just came from the fact that there weren't that many, there aren't that many, uh, soap operas are, are great. The one thing that I've always had a problem with soap operas is um, that there aren't faces like mine featured predominantly in roles on soap operas. Mm -hmm. It's like sometimes we'll come and we'll go and 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 we're and we aid a story, but we never we tend to never lead a story. And and, and that was one thing that I've always found rather odd and and kind of peculiar about the soap opera uh, genre was that there weren't that many uh not only faces of uh African American color but also Latino and so have you. Mm -hmm. So there weren't that much diversity there. And so I just decided that if you want change, you have to be the change that you want to see. So I right. created the show. Yeah, which is awesome. And you know that I'm a huge champion of diversity right. in film. So um, I, I think that's uh, amazing. And I know you've really been following with Victoria Rao. Right. And um, can you just explain to the audience um, the situation with that um, in terms of diversity and so properties? Well, uh, much in line with what I just said, Victoria Rao <laughs> used to play uh, Dru Dru Drusilla Barber Winters on on, on the Young and the Restless, very popular character. And uh, she's come out recently saying that um, she's suing the Young and the Restless and uh, CBS for 
uh, basically what she calls uh, stopping her from getting work and discrimination and all because she was very adamant and vocal about getting African-American people of color in two positions that they weren't before. And her, her, her standpoint is she's been uh, blackballed or blacklisted um, for, for speaking out. And so now she's just basically chronicling a lot of things that she went through on the set when she started raising uh, just different opinions about not having African-American hairstylists or, 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 or her being treated differently than a Caucasian actress. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it's, 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 it's really turned the industry on its ear because I, 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 I think the thing with that is sometimes a character like, like a Victoria Rowell, because some people think of her as very eccentric and very kind of... Um, shall we say different, that whatever she says is sort of discredited. Mm. But I don't think that because of what you may feel her personality is, you can't refute the fact of what she's saying. So it's like you could just look at the fact and like you can't really refute the fact of what she's saying. Right. You know, I, one of the things that I appreciate about you is that you're a student of the craft. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I follow you on Facebook and all that good stuff, and sometimes we go back and forth. But what I've noticed is that, you know, even with uh, Empire, you, mm -hmm. you're making comments or, you know, did you see, what, what was the soap opera you were talking about the other day? But it seems right. as though you study what's going on so that you can make uh, Anacostia even better. Right. Um, I think in order for you to do a show, any any show, I, I think you have to have, you, you have to be true to what it is that you're doing. And I think a lot of times people can sit back and, and see a show like mine or see a show like uh, Malice or see a show like some of these other shows that are on the web and they can say, oh, I, oh, I, oh, I have a camera and I have from some friends who, who can act or who they think can act. And they put together a show and it's just like, it's, it's more of a detriment to the community more than something that's enhancing it. And so the, the, the problem I had with Empire, and I know like a lot of people are like, oh God, like, <laughs> like somebody who don't like Empire. It's not that I don't like Empire. I just feel as though a lot of things that are, have happened in Empire have been borrowed from soaps like Dynasty and mm -hmm. Desperate Housewives. And as, especially this last finale, which like drove me crazy because as a student of this, you're you're sort of looking back like, okay, they killed him like Eva Longoria killed her father, or this is a segue to this, or this is a segue to this, and everyone knows that any doctor that that misdiagnoses ALS <laughs> really needs to be kicked out of all of all type of medical professions. Right. But but we all know that Terrence Howard is sometimes a detriment to his own cause. So we have to put ALS in place just in case he acts up and we can have a way to get rid of him. So now that the uh -huh. show is a bona fide hit and turns to saying, you know, I can now ask for a little bit more money. Right. I don't have to have ALS now. <laughs> So, right. but notice the writer said, I don't have ALS. I have something bad is not as bad. That's just a back door for Terrence. If you act up, <laughs> right, you might have a brain aneurysm and you're gone just like that. <laughs> so that's what you do. Oh my gosh. Now that is one thing that I will implore on my own show. It's right. like, if somebody give me a problem, you will have an illness real quick. Right, right, yeah, right. So, yeah. Okay, so let's just talk a little bit about Anacostia and more so as a web series creator, how do you create the buy-in where you're building this this uh, fan base where people are literally on their breaks, you know, in a cubicle, Anacostia watching, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I guess, is it the writing or is it also social media outreach? Like, how do you... Well, I think it starts with the writing. I think it starts with you have to treat your audience as if they're smart and you have to treat them as if you have to. It's one thing to be African-American and, and write for an African-American audience. But when you write to write, different cultures and different races can identify with what it is that you're doing. And when they can identify with you and they say, oh, OK, this is identifiable to people. Mm -hmm. not just 
African American. When you can do that in a show, you you can engage your audience a little bit better to where if I'm talking to you about something say if i'm talking to you about uh something that is predominantly was made for african americans mm -hmm. and 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 we have somebody that's sitting here that's caucasian that may not have seen it because they're like okay well that is what's made for african americans right. you and i can have a conversation but but you and i and this other person can't right. but if it's something that's geared towards people in general we all can have a water cooler conversation about what's going on right. on that show. And I think that that's been the lore of Anacostia for so long. It's, it's an African-American predominantly staffed show, but what's going on in the show is universal to all races. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's another thing that I've talked about before in terms of universal storytelling, mm -hmm. right? Um, and you d I definitely think your the characters, uh, the diversity of the characters mm -hmm. reflects that. And you can pick any character and you can say, oh, that, that could be me. Or right. I can relate to that person. That's amazing. Um, I guess uh, another question that I, I have. Um, so you just came out with uh, season four. Right. And uh, there was a, a little bit of a gap, which we talked about mm -hmm. between season three to season four. Um, but... Man, when I, I just recently watched the end season finale of season three. Right. That was like, in, I mean, I don't want to say empire type stuff, mm -hmm. but like it was amazing uh, to say in, in regards to, I think what you were talking about earlier is more so not giving something that's cookie cut. Right. That people expect. Mm -hmm. And so there was a lot of things in, in the finale that you just weren't, necessarily expecting right so um you, you know t just talk a little bit about um what what went into creating a season finale you know like that where you know oh my goodness well 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 the culmination of season uh, season three was a um, same-sex marriage but between my character sean and another character by the name of julian mm -hmm. and um halfway through the season we got introduced to a character who a female character who used to date Julian in high school and hadn't really let that go, even though he was gay, she still was holding on to it. I don't know what he really <laughs> did to her in high school. Right. But um, her husband was this religious nutcase um, that really took his job seriously. And um, little by little, he started to unravel. Mm -hmm. And so he sort of funneled all of his attention on this gay wedding. Mm -hmm. And what became something that was something started out that's so small, it sort of escalated and got out of control to where you get to the season finale at the wedding um, and all heck breaks, breaks loose at that wedding. Right. Um, I was really proud of that season finale because leading up to it, a lot of people had thoughts of what they thought was going to happen mm -hmm. at the season finale, but they didn't expect that. Right. And and so when it happened and we saw the reaction to it, I said, I know that we had the 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 effect that I wanted was achieved. Um, the only problem that I had about that finale is that we had a huge problem getting the location for it with the African-American churches. OK. Um, when when I spoke to them, they said, oh, sure, fine. Sounds good. When we went more in detail with them and told them that we would be doing a gay that we would be filming what was a gay marriage in the wedding, they shut it down. Mm. They were like, uh, no, you can't film here. You can film anything else here, but you cannot film that. And so th that was kind of disheartening, especially from um, the, the African-American black church where there are probably more sinners than, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but right. no, but I want to get it. I want to get into this because we talked. Uh, we talked a little bit about Empire earlier, right? Mm -hmm. And obviously, Lee Daniels had said he wanted to blow the lid off of homosexuality mm -hmm. in the black community and everything. And uh, obviously, um, you know, Anacostia was attacking this before uh, Empire. <laughs> Shade. That's how you throw. <laughs> you taught me how to throw shade, right? That's My called. <laughs> yeah, that's called throwing shade. Right there. <laughs> all right, but no, and it's it, true shade. Well, but in all in all seriousness, though, um, did you go into the series with that in mind, and and especially in, in season three, um, as as you're kind of saying, art imitating life, or you know, mm -hmm. vice versa. Um, but I find that interesting that what you are fighting in the season, right, 
actually to, you know, just to get a church. Because I, I did notice in uh, the episode uh, one of uh, season four, it seemed like it was green screened. Was that correct? No. I wasn't? No. That was, okay. No. That All actually right. was a church. Okay. That was a Caucasian church. <laughs> That was a Caucasian church. Another See, lesson in shade from Anthony. That's just, you know, when you need something done, you go to the Caucasians. I'm just saying. Okay. I'm just saying. Speak the truth, shame the devil, you know. Anyway, but anyway, back, look, I've had some wine and some champagne, okay? You never know what you're going to get today. Okay. Uh, okay, but back to what you were saying. Yes. Like about that, um, the... What I wanted with the character was I, I knew that there was always a difference between how the black community would perceive a gay character and, and, and gay portrayals as opposed to the Caucasian culture. Like you have a show like, uh, I forget the name of it. It used to come on Showtime, A Queer, a Queer's Folk. Mm -hmm. That show was very, that show was very, very, that, that show was very, very popular. On our side, you had the, the Wire and a character like Omar, which they would consider him in the streets uh, 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 a, a, a gay thug, um, and and that seemed to be okay because he had the more street edge to the more street edge to 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 him to where he can identify mm. with 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 this show. What I wanted to do was I wanted to create a character who was gay, but. His homosexuality had nothing to do with how he was perceived or looked at in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And if anyone ever watches the show, him being gay and him and, him and his relationship, it's not even something that is thought of as something like, oh, wow, uh, uh, they're gay or like they're anything like that. It's something that is part. It's something that is part of the community. Right. And. I think when you throw so much into it and you try to avoid certain things, that's when you start, that's when you start to fail. And subsequently, I've seen so many other web series to come out behind Anacostia that feature gay characters. And it seems like that the work that we have tried to do to sort of break down stereotypes of 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 how people see homosexuals in the in the, especially in the African American community that they have gone back and just completely erase everything that we try to do and it so sort of pisses me off <laughs> yeah. um, when I see stuff like that because not every gay not every gay man is the same mm -hmm. and when you have the public at large who thinks that gay men are after you are after somebody's husbands or they're uh, um, predators or anything else like like that, or they're hypersexualized. Right. When you try to do the difference, someone coming along and having the opposite is just reinforcing that stereotype. Yeah. And and so I'm glad that we've gotten letters and we've gotten a lot of support, especially from Glad, uh, saying that they really appreciate mm. the the portrayal of the gay characters. And then especially with the what happens in season three, it was important that we showed that aspect of it, the protesting and how right. everything led up to it. And then in season four, you see that the aftermath of that season three finale, and then you see those same people, some of those same people who are protesting are now sort of throwing, throwing their hands up saying, well, we didn't know that it was gonna go that far. Mm -hmm. You never know it's gonna go that far when you get it started. Mm -hmm. And then when it gets out of your hand, there's nothing that you can do about it. Right. Wow. Okay. Uh, you got to come back on because we we, we got to wrap things up. But obviously, we could t we could talk for a long time. Yeah. Just but <laughs> if you don't mind, just tell people where they can find you and and Anacostia the series. Um, well, you can find Anacostia on YouTube. Um, it's youtube.com forward slash Anacostia series. We're on Twitter at at Anacostia series. We're on Facebook, Anacostia the series. Um, I'm I'm linked to every last one of those pages, so you can find me that way. And um, I'm looking forward to what's coming. We, we have a tremendous finale planned for this season, mm. which is out of this world. It's like real secretive because people like to steal your ideas. Mm. So um, we've kept it really under wraps. 
Um, so, um, so like, we're not really going to say like who our guest star is because you know some people like to go behind your back and try to take them. <laughs> but, but um, don't think I don't know. But um, so yeah, so I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to it, and hopefully we're going to have a good time in LA with the cast. The almost the entire cast is going and representing the wow. DMV, and Malice is Malice is going. So it's going to yeah. be and another show from the DMV. Thurston is going to be there. So it's going to be a um, it's going to be a cabaret. <laughs> Well, congratulations. Good luck uh, next week with the ISA. Thank you. And you're always welcome on the couch here at Picture Love. Thank you. And, and my suit is like the bananas. <laughs> my suit's bananas.